Hi, this is Ali Rango for Game Visuals. In this tutorial, you're going to be shown how to bring an animated character out of Blender and then import that character into Unity. You're going to be shown how to set up options in Unity as well as how to set up code that allows this character to animate as well as move around. So when you push a button, uh, your character will be able to turn. Your character will go into its animation when it moves forward. Your character will be able to uh, use a rigid body to do things like walk up a hill. Your character will, uh, well, you'll be shown how to put uh, an idle animation on your character. You'll be shown how to alternate between multiple idle, uh, idle animations. You'll be shown how to add two different an damage animations that randomly activate when you click on your character. Uh, this tutorial is explained in a step-by-step -step fashion. As you work through the tutorial, I try to not only explain what I'm doing, I try to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, so let's get started and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. A lot of the work on this channel was inspired by YouTube channel Holistic 3D. If you're interested in the subject of animation as well as working with uh, uh, making games in Unity, I recommend you check out the Holistic 3D YouTube channel. Hi, this is Ali Arango for Game Visuals. Today I would like to show you how to bring a character from Blender 2.8 as well as with animations into Unity. I would also like to show you how to set up those animations to work inside of Unity. So let's get started. Okay, what you see in front of you is a character that I modeled inside of Blender. Uh, this version of Blender is 2.8. Currently on this character, there are three idle animations as well as two damage animations as well as a run animation. Okay, when I click on my armature, you can see all the different animation frames down in the timeline. Uh, I recommend when working on your own character that uh, you mark off where the animations begin as well as start. Uh, if you want to have the version of this character, uh, you can go to littleguycgi.com and you should be able to download uh, this character or a character very similar to this one. Okay, one of the things you want to do in preparing to bring your character from Blender to Unity is you want to click on your character mesh. You want to hold control, then press A. This brings up this menu that you see right here. You can left click right here and this will apply the rotation as well as the scale. I'm going to hold control, press A again, and then I'm going to select the location to apply that as well. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to left click on nothingness to deselect our mesh. We're going to left click on our armature, hold shift, and then while holding shift, we're going to left click on our mesh. So I'm letting go of shift. First we select the, the armature, held shift, and then selected the mesh. Okay, as far as your timeline, uh, my animation start on frame one, and then I go to 270. I have the timeline go to 300. You generally want to make sure that your timeline is longer than uh, your animations. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to File, Export, FBX. We're going to uh, look down at this menu here where we have our main uh, tab here. We're going to put a check mark next to Selected Objects. And then where we have this forward, negative forward, or negative Z forward it says. What we want to do is left click here and then select Z forward. We're then going to click on geometry. Uh, this is fine, everything that's there. We're going to click on armature. We want to take this check mark away for add leaf bones. We're going to go to animation. We want to take the check mark away for NLA strips as well as force start slash n king and then with all of that done you can name your fbx file here you want to make sure you know where your fbx file is going you want to look to the right and then you want to select export fbx
Okay, here we are in the Unity Hub. Uh, what we're gonna do is click New. When this window pops up, we're gonna make sure we're on 3D. We're gonna name this Character Animation. We're gonna left click on Create. Okay, here we are in Unity. This is how I had Unity set up before. To get back to the default uh, window for Unity, should be Window, Layout. I'm gonna select uh, Revert Factory Settings, just so we see the, a similar screen. So this is the typical screen that you see when you first start up Unity in. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a ground for our character to stand on. So we're going to go to the upper left hand side of the screen. We're going to go to game object, go to 3D object, go to plane. And then we can see a plane right there. We're going to look to our right where we see transform. We're going to look to where we see scale. Uh, we're going to go to X where we see that one. We're going to change this to 50. We're going to skip the Y, leave that at one. Then we're going to go to where that Z is. And we're going to change that one to 50 as well. I'll just press enter. Okay, I'm gonna pull down this folder. So I have this uh, image here, this PNG file I made uh, in GIMP. That's a file that has uh, hexagons on it, a hexagon pattern. So I'm gonna drag that into our assets folder here in Unity. And this is the FBX file. So we're gonna left click there and then drag this into Unity. Okay, when I left click on our FBX file, we can see these settings over here. We can also see this preview window. If I hover near the top of the preview window, I can make this bigger. Uh, we see a timeline right here. If I click the play button, we should see our character, character go through all of the animations in the current timeline. Okay, what we need to do is to split these animations up. So uh, this is the name of the timeline now. The first thing we're gonna do is set up uh, our idle animation. So I'm gonna go to the right here, to the right of the screen, click the uh, plus button. I'm gonna name this idle one. And what I have is I, I made a list of where all of the uh, animations were as far as the one timeline in Blender. So this starts on frame one. This ends on frame 40. So we want this to end on frame 39. The reason why you would do that is when you do a loop animation, which is we want this to be typically by taking off that last uh, frame, you make things smoother. We're going to put a check mark next to loop time as well as loop pose. We're gonna to go to the plus button again. And uh, we're gonna to go to idle two. And idle two starts off at frame 100. So we'll go to start, enter in 100. We'll go to end. It ends at frame 140. So we'll enter 139, then press enter. We'll put a check mark next to loop time as well as loop pose. Okay, we'll go to the right. We'll click the plus button again. We'll make this be idle three. And uh, idle three starts at, idle three starts at frame 160, I just press enter when I move the mouse there. Uh, and then it ends at 190, so we want this to be a loop, so this is gonna be ending at 100, 189. Oh, what's going on here? One, eight, what? 
interesting one eight nine there we go press enter so i'll put a check mark next to loop time as well as loop pose okay we're going to add a run pose so we're going to go to that plus button to the right we're going to name this run we're going to go to that start frame the run starts at 61. It ends at 84. We want this to loop. So we're going to have this end at 83. We're going to put a check mark next to loop time as well as loop pose. Okay, we have two damage poses we want to put in or damage animations, I should say. So we're going to go to that plus button to the right. We're going to put in damage one this starts at frame 220 it ends at 230 we actually don't want this to loop so that's why we had this actually end at 230 we're going to go to that plus button again And this is going to be our damage two animation. This starts at 250 and this ends at 270. We already have that 269 there. We don't want this to loop, so we'll just press uh, enter. Okay, when we look at our plane here, as far as having our character move around, because the plane is uh, white, uh, more so just a, a solid color, it would be uh, easier to see movement of our character with uh, something on this plane. So we're gonna left click and drag this hex hexagon uh, pattern on here. I'm going to left click on the, oh, we have to apply these right here. So when I left click apply, normally you, you would see that at the bottom. Uh, so we have this uh, hexagon pattern here. So when we click this triangle here, what we can see is well, what you want to look at is this tiling right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to 100 for X, and then I'm going to go to Y and change this to 100 as well. I'll just press Enter. So now we can see we can see that uh, that pattern, that hexagon pattern there. Okay, what we're trying to do with this tutorial is to set up animations as well as having you have the ability to control those animations. Uh, typically when you have a character moving around, you want to have an object like an, a capsule that has the code to move the capsule and then have your character that has the animations parented to that object like the capsule. Okay, that being said, we're going to go to the upper left. We're going to go to game object, go to 3D object, and then go to capsule. So we have this capsule that just came in there. Okay, this uh, colored gizmo here is our manipulator. We're just going to move the capsule so that it is above the ground. Okay, what we're going to do now is go to our FBX. We're going to left click and drag this into the scene. When we put this in the scene, uh, when we look over to the right, we can see we have this... Uh, transform panel we're gonna go to uh, X change that to to position X change that to zero go to Y change that to zero then go to Z change that to zero as well and we can see that makes us uh, line up right with the capsule which is what we want so I'm rolling the mouse wheel to zoom the uh, view back I'm gonna move our character above the ground 
with our character selected, I'm going to click to the upper left to uh, so that I'm selected on the scale tool. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the scale tool to scale our character down. And I want it to be about the size of that capsule. So with it scaled, it being the character scaled to that amount, I'm going to go to the upper left, go to the move tool, and then push our character down. So the character is lined up with the uh, the capsule, or like you know, right almost the size of the capsule. If you want an easy way to zoom in on objects you're selected on, you can press the F key and you'll zoom in. So I'm going to go to the left to select our player character again. And when I say that, I mean the character that has our animations on it. I'm going to click the scale tool and I'm going to scale the character down. even more. I'm going to go to the left and click the move tool and then push the character down so the character is pretty much the uh, around the sides of the capsule as well as right on top of the capsule Okay, what I'm going to do now is go to the left to where we have our hierarchy. I'm going to left click on the capsule, right click the capsule, go to rename, and I'm going to name this player. Okay, what I want to do now is parent our player character to the player. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click and then drag the player so it looks like it's going right on top when i say player i mean the blue character that has animations on it on to the capsule that is now named player and then when i did that you can see that the player character is like indented uh un underneath where you see player this means that we have the player character parented to that capsule Okay, what I'm going to do now is I am going to left click on the capsule. I'm going to look to the right and we can see the properties for the capsule. I'm going to take away this check mark next to uh, mesh renderer. So now it's just more easy to see our uh, player character, the blue player character that has the animations on it now. Okay, currently the way things are set up with Unity is we can see this big main window. I want to be able to see the uh, scene as well as the game window so to do that i'm gonna click on this game here i'm gonna left click and drag it and pull it down and then to the right here so now i have the main scene window here as well as the game window here okay we want to make things easy for ourselves as we work on this animation so what we're going to do is we're going to left click on the camera the main camera we're going to look to the right and we can see these uh, the transform settings for the camera. We see uh, for the position X, Y is Z. We're going to leave the X zero, the Y one. However, for the Z, we're going to change this to two. Press enter. And then for the rotation, we're going to leave the X at zero. But for the Y, we're going to change this to 180. Okay, by setting the camera up that way, we can clearly see the player character. I'm going to hover right on the edge here, pull this slightly to the side, this being this line here. We can see that our character is above the ground too much. So I'm going to left click on that character. And then with the manipulator tool, I'm going to push the player character down. Okay, and that looks to be about good there. If you want to rotate the view here, you can hold the Alt key as well as the left mouse button key. So our, our character is almost touching the ground, which is, is fine. 
Okay, uh, with our character selected and with us being able to see the uh, properties here, we can see our character has an animator. Uh, we need to, well, when you look at with this controller, you can see none. We need to uh, make a animator controller for the character. And the way we can do that is we'll just go down to the, the assets, we'll right click. This menu pops up, we'll go to create. And then we'll go down to where we see animator controller, we'll left click there. And then we'll name this. Character controller. Okay, so we'll click on our character again. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to left click and drag this over from the assets panel into the controller spot here. So now we have that uh, controller in the slot that it's supposed to be in. Okay, now we want to be able to see the animator window that that animator controller is connected to. So what we can do is go to the upper right, select window, go down to where we see, where we see ana, uh, animation, and then go to animation, go to animate tour. So we'll left click there. And then this menu pops up. I'm going to roll my mouse to zoom back. What you should see is in any state entry as well as uh, exit state. Okay, this is where we set up and control our animations from. We have our character here, and our, our blue character with, with the animations on it. We click this triangle here. Then these are all the different animation clips that we made. So the first thing we're going to do is drag in this idle one clip. When we drag this idle one clip in, we can see that uh, this is a uh, highlighted orange. The reason why this is highlighted orange is because because this is the default animation state. If we go and we click play, we have that very subtle idle animation there. I'm going to click the uh, play to stop that animation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in uh, the idle animation too. With this animation in here, if we want, we can right click and select where we see set layer is the default state. So now this is the default state. So now when we click play, now our character does the other idle animation. You see how uh, we see that bar going through that bar lets us see the, the, the progress as the animation progresses along. Okay, what we can do now, if we want it, we could right click, select make transition, and then this arrow comes out. We can connect this up to this other idle. So what should happen is when I click play, I'll show you. So this animation plays, and then this animation plays. And when this animation plays, you can see this, you know, the animation just keeps idling uh, once it comes to this animation. I'm gonna click this button to come out of that preview. Okay, so what we're going to do is left click on this idle one, right click, and then select set as default state. And what we want to do is bring in our other, oops, that's the one, bring in our other idle animation. I'm just going to move this exit out of the way. And what we want is to right click, select make transition, and we're having these arrows go away from the animations back to the idle one. Okay, currently it's slightly difficult to see the character, so we're gonna go to the uh, upper left, click on scene, and uh, you wanna select the directional light. I'm gonna go to this, looks like a yellowish line, I guess that's the, this line right here, and we're just gonna rotate the, uh, the light. And by doing that, now you can see, we can see the character better. We're now going to click on the main camera. We're going to look to our right, uh, where we see position. And you want to have the 
where the camera was previously set for two, you want to have this set for uh, probably 2.15, as you see here. And that just lets you have the character more in view. Okay, with that done, I'm going to click back on the animator. Down in the assets panel, I'm going to right click. I'm going to select create. I'm going to go to C sharp script. And I'm going to name this character. We want to start with a capital letter. Character, capital A, animation. And I'll press enter. And what I want to do to go into the script is I'm going to double click this to open up Visual Studio. If you don't go right into your script, you can go back to Unity. Double click on the script again. And you should then have the uh, script open up. Okay, this code is relatively simple right here. This code uh, connects this piece of code to Unity right here. This character animation is uh, the name of our class. This is what we named this file. Uh, we have a start function as well as a uh, update function right here. The start function basically sets up what happens when you start the game up. The up update function uh, sets up what, what happens every frame of the game. While these are known as functions, they can also be known as methods as well. Okay, the first thing we want to do is go to this first curly bracket uh, right underneath public class. And uh, we want to reference the animator. So to do that, we're going to put in public. This lets us access this script inside of Unity. Uh, long story short, it makes a box. Most of the time, you can have some control over the code. We're going to put in animate tour, not animation. And this, uh, we're going to name this reference anim. And we're going to put in a semicolon to end that C sharp statement. Okay, now what we want to do is go inside of the start function. We want to use the name that we just uh, put in the code, nm. Space equals, we want to use git component. Visual Studio wants to help us out. I'm like, let it. We're going to use a lesser than symbol. We're going to put in animate tour. So this is connecting to the animator that has our animations. Now we want to put in a parentheses. Visual Studio helps out. We're going to put in a semicolon to in that C sharp statement. Okay, the paper purpose of this code is to uh, be able to press a button and have uh, animation play. So what we're going to do is in the void update function, we're going to uh, write an if statement. So we're going to put if parentheses input and, and what we want to do is push a key down. So we're going to use dot capital G uh, and we want to put in get key down. The difference between get key and get down, get key means hold a key down, get key down means press a key down and let go. Uh, to me, it sounds like get key would be the one that you would press and let go and get key down would be you would hold the button down, but that's not the case. Get key down means you push the button and let go of it. Uh, so just remember that, that distinction, get key down as you push the button and let go of it. So. Uh, with that being said, we're going to put in a parentheses, quotation one. That's going to be the button that we use. And then we're going to go outside of these parentheses. We're going to put in a curly bracket. And then what we want to do here is put in nm dot, and we want to play an animation. So we put in dot play. We're going to put in parentheses quotation this name here needs to be exact name of our animation so we'll go to unity 
We want to play the idle too, so it needs to be exactly that. So we'll put in lowercase i d l e two, and then past this quotation, we want to put in comma space, and then we're going to put in negative one. Now this negative one, I'm going to go back to Unity. This animator uh, negative one responds to the base layer of this animator. You can have multiple layers in the animator, so that's what the the negative one is dealing with. Uh, by the way, I want to give credit to Aaron Hilbert. That's where I learned a lot of information that I, I learned to make this tutorial. Uh, if you want to know more about the subject, I, I recommend you go check out his YouTube channel. I'm going to put in comma, zero, F, and then uh, semicolon to finish off that C-sharp statement. Okay, this number here refers to zero, basically means start at the beginning of the animation. Think of this number here after the second comma as zero start and one is the end. So 0 0.5 would mean you would start halfway through. Uh, so just keep that in mind with that. Okay, so with this code here, what we want to do is go to file and then select save. Okay, what we want to do now is go back to Unity. And then here in Unity, what we want to do is we have our player here, right? You want to connect this code onto, when you're dealing with animation, you want to connect this onto uh, what you have animated. And then when you're doing code to move things around, you want to connect that to the, the object that doesn't have the animation on it. So we're clicked on our mesh that has the animation on it. And what we want to do is left click on the code that we just wrote and drag that over. So now that uh, script, that code is connected to this character here. Uh, and that's what you want. Now, you see this NM right here? You might sit there and say you, you want to, you know, put something in here. Leave this as it is. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click the preview button. We can see our character is in its idle pose. Now we're going to press the one key and we can see the character is going into that idle two animation, which is what we want. And then once it's done, it goes right back to that uh, idle one animation. So we're going to click the play button to come out of that preview mode. Okay, so how do we set it up so that the other idle animation plays? We'll go back to the code. And it's very simple. All we do is we go to this if statement. We select it. Control C. We'll click right next to this curly bracket here. We'll press enter. Control V. So we have all of the information copied. So now we're just going to change the button by changing this to 2. And then we're going to change the animation because the other animation, if we look back at Unity, it's called Idle 3. So we'll change this to 3. Then with that done, we'll go to File, Save. Okay, now we'll go back to Unity, we'll select play, and we can see there's our idle animation. We'll select the one key, and there's that idle. When we press two, there's the other idle, and we go right back to uh, our idle, our regular idle pose. So I'm just gonna select the play button here. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to click on uh, this FBX file. We're going to drag this damage one clip up as well as this damage two clip. So if I select the play button and then right click, 
temporarily to see that animation. That's the you know animation that happens. If I left click here, right click, and then select uh, this is the default state. There's the other animation. I'm gonna go back to idle one. And uh, set this back to set as layer default state. Okay, so basically what we want to do now is we want to be able to click a button and have our character act like it's getting hit. So to do that, we'll go back to the code. And we're going to do this with another if statement. So we'll... Go right underneath that last if statement and then we'll put in if parentheses input and this time uh, we're gonna, well we're going to put in dot and we're going to put in get button down And we're going to put in parentheses, zero. And basically what this zero is going to do is that zero represents the left mouse button. I'm pretty sure if we wanted the right mouse button, we would put uh, one. So now we'll go to the outside of this parentheses. We'll put in a curly bracket. And then we're going to use nm similar to what we did before dot play parentheses then we're going to put in quotation and this needs to be the exact name so we'll just take a look back at unity so this is damage one lowercase So we'll type in damage one. We'll go outside of that quotation, comma, negative one. So we know that's on the base layer, comma. We want this to play from the beginning. So we'll put in zero and then F. And then we'll finish this off with a semicolon. And then now what we'll do is go to the upper left, go to file, and then we'll save this uh, script. So what we'll do now is we'll go back to Unity. We'll select the play button. Okay, so I have a compiler error. Let's see what that is. If input get button down. Okay, I I uh I see what they what I did wrong, and uh, what we want is get mouse button down. So capital M. That's where sometimes uh, Visual Studio trying to help you out can mess things up. Uh, so what we're going to do is go to the upper right, save that file. Okay, so now we'll go back to Unity. And we'll click the preview button. So there's our idle pose when we press one. There's the one idle pose, two. There's the other idle pose. Now when we go to left click, we can see that our character... Uh, does the damage animation. However, you see that the character doesn't go back to the uh, idle pose. So I'm going to select the uh, play button. Okay, the reason for this is we don't have uh, a transition going back to the idle one. So what we, do, we want to do is left click this, right click, 
select make transition. So now we'll go back to the preview button. So now the character takes damage and goes right back to the idle pose. So I'll select the play button to come out of there. Okay, what we want to do now is we want to have our character randomly uh, choose between both of these damage animations. So I'm going to left click on this damage animation, right click, select make transition, and then connect this to idle one. Okay, with that done, we need to go back to the uh, code. And uh, we already have this uh, this set up as far as uh, damage on uh, the mouse down. So what we need to do is we're going to click this first behind this first curly bracket. We're going to press enter. And uh, what we're going to do is we are going to set up the code so that randomly we can choose between uh, those two damage animations. So I'm going to put in I and T for in integer, which is a whole number. I'm going to press N and then I'm going to put in equals space random dot range and then basically we're dealing with two animations so we're going to put in parentheses zero and then comma and then we're going to put in two and then we're going to end this off with a semicolon Okay, what we're going to do now is press enter. We're going to put in a sense another if statement in this if statement. So we're going to put in if parentheses in space equals equals zero. We're going to press enter, put in another curly bracket. Then we're going to put in anim dot play parentheses quotation damage one and this has to be exactly as a uh, the animation is uh, written out so then we'll go to uh, the end of the parentheses and uh, well we, we don't want the end of the parentheses we want the end of the quotation we're going to put in a comma space negative one comma zero and then F because we want this to play from the beginning we go outside the parentheses put in a uh, uh, semicolon to end off the C sharp statement and then what we're going to do is we're going to go behind this curly bracket and what we want to do here is put in else put in another curly bracket and for this part we're going to take this code at the bottom And uh, we'll copy this, put this inside here. We'll change this from damage one to damage two. And uh, with that, we don't need this piece of code right here. So with that done, we'll go to file, save. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go back to Unity and we'll go to 
preview button. So we see our idle pose. So we'll press one, go to that first idle animation. Two, we go to the second. And what should happen is we should, when we left click, which I'm not doing yet, we should randomly go between those two damage animations. And there we go. So randomly, it's chosen for us, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to go to this play button to come out of that preview. Okay, what we want to do now is set things up so the character can move around. So we need to make up a script for that. So I'm going to click this triangle here and then I'm going to right click. This menu pops up. We're going to go to create C sharp script. We're going to name this capital C character capital M movement. And then we're going to double click to open that script up. Okay. So this is where we're going to put in the code to move, uh, to set up, to have our character move. So we need a few variables. So we need, uh, underneath this public class, public, which means we'll be able to see a box where we'll be able to adjust these settings. Then we're going to put in float. Float means a decimal point. So it's a variable that uh, deals with decimal points. Then we need to name the variable. So we're going to name this speed. We're going to put this equals to 10 dot zero F semicolon and then another variable. So we're going to use public basically makes a box inside of unity. We're going to put in float, which uh, is a decimal point. We're going to put in rotation capital S speed equals one zero zero point zero F then we're going to put in a semicolon to finish that statement off. Okay. To set up the rest of this code, we're going to go to inside of the update function. We're going to put in float. Oops. Translation equals input dot get access parentheses vertical. When that vertical did you see refers to uh, keys on a keyboard. We're going to multiply this times the speed variable that we put in up top there. So we're going to put in a semicolon to in that statement. Now we're going to put in float rotation. equals input dot get access parentheses oh, wait a second horizontal Then we're going to multiply this times the uh, variable up top. Rotation speed and then put a semicolon to uh, finish that statement. We're then going to put in translation. T 
times equals time dot delta time and time dot delta time basically makes code so it runs the same on fast computers as well as slow computers so we're going to put in rotation space times equals time dot delta time put in a semicolon to finish that c-sharp statement then we're going to put in transform dot capital T translation dot translation capital T translate is what we want parentheses zero comma space parenthesis comma translation we're going to end that off with a semicolon now we're going to put in transform dot capital R rotate parentheses zero comma space rotation comma comma space zero finish that off with a semicolon Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the upper left file. We're going to save that code. We're going to go to Unity. We're going to click on our player, which is our capsule. We're going to, we're going to click Scenes. We can see our capsule there. Uh, and what we're going to do is, this is the, our character movement. We're going to left click and drag this to our capsule. Okay, we haven't set up animation yet, but what we want is for our player to move. So we're going to select the preview button. So when we push back, forward, things are working as they should. When I press the uh, left and right keys, our player rotates. And uh, moves around like it, it should. Okay, what we're going to do now is go back to our code. We're going to go back to the top. Now we're going to reference our animator. So we're going to put in static. Okay, we want lowercase static. What animate tour? And then we're going to name this. We're going to reference that NM. So now we're going to come underneath this code here. Still in the update function. And we're going to put in an if statement. Just gave myself some more space. I'm going to put an if parentheses input dot well, I'm thinking of the wrong thing. We want to what we want is int 
if parentheses translation exclamation mark equals zero and we'll go beneath the uh, I mean uh, past the parentheses so we'll put in curly bracket and then we'll reference that anim so anim dot set bool and this is referencing something that we're going to have to set up in our animator we're going to put in parentheses quotation is running again this isn't set up yet but we, we're going to set this up true then we finish that off with a semicolon Okay, so now we're going to go to this bottom curly bracket. We're going to put in else. And uh, what we're going to do is we'll put in that curly bracket. We're going to put in nm dot set. bool parentheses quotations is running comma false come outside of the parentheses and we'll put in semicolon Okay, we're not going to save the code yet. We're going to go to Unity. We're going to set things up so that they can work with that code. So we'll select the animator and uh, we'll click on our original FBX file. We'll drag this run in. And then we'll right click, select Make Transition, connect this to the idle. And then what we're going to do is uh, We actually, wait a second, I'm going to delete that first. We're going to select idle, right click, select make transition, having tra a transition going to the run. Then we want to right click and then select make transition and have this going back to the idle. So what we're going to do is we're going to Go to the uh, little to the left. We're going to click this. We're going to go to parameters. We're going to click this plus button. And we have these different options to pick from. What we want to select is bool. And we're going to name this is running. We're going to leave this unchecked. And now what we're going to do is we're going to left click on the transition going from the idle one to the run. So we'll click this plus button and we can see this is running and that is running true is what we want. Now we're going to click the transition going from the run to the idle one. We're going to go to the right. We're going to select the plus button, leave this is running as it is, but we're going to click this arrow and we're going to set this to false. So with that done, we're going to go back to our Visual Studio. We're going to go to the upper left and select 
save to save that file. Now we're going to go back to Unity. Okay, there is something we're going to do to the code, and uh, we're going to double click on this character animation. We're going to copy, so I'm looking, here's the void update, right? So here's the curly bracket that starts it. Here's the one that ends it. You can see this line uh, showing you what's all inside there. We're going to take all of this inside the void update. And then we're going to hold control, press C to copy that. We're going to double click on our character move uh, script as our code. And what we're going to do is go to the top of this void update. We're going to paste all of this information in. Okay, where you look up here, I have this static animator anim added here, as well as this anim get component animator. So basically, the information was taken from the character animation script. I have that all now in the character movement script. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. Okay, so I have this saved. So I'm going to go back to Unity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on our character mesh. So I am actually going to go to the right with this animator. I'm going to click this gear. I'm going to select remove component. I'm also going to remove the script from here. Okay, now I'm going to click on our player, which is the capsule that our Character mesh is parented to. I'm going to add the character, uh, add the animator here. I'm going to go to the FBX file and see right here this avatar. I'm going to grab the avatar and then uh, put that in this empty slot here. Okay, the reason why I'm doing all this is we can have all of our code on one object and I would rather have that on be on the uh, the capsule rather than on the actual character mesh. Okay, with all that done, let's go to click the uh, preview button. We can see that our character is animating. Like we want them to animate. Okay, let's check to make sure the other animations work. So if we left click our character, still takes random damage. If we press the one key, the character goes into the one idle pose. We press the number two key, it still goes into the other idle pose. So we'll go back to the preview button to click that. So that's good and that's, yeah, that's good that works. Okay, our character can move around, it can animate. We want our character to be able to do things like go up a plane. So we're gonna to go to the upper left, we're gonna to go to game object, 3D object, we're gonna to go to plane, to bring it plane in. We're gonna to go to the uh, upper left, to the rotate tool. We're gonna to rota rotate this plane. We're gonna to go to the move tool to the upper left. We're gonna push this back. We're going to go down to our assets panel, go to right, go to create, down to material. We'll name this hill. 
Uh, we'll go look to the right where we see main maps, where we see Albedo. We'll click there. We'll select an orange dish color. We'll pull that material onto our hill. Okay, with that done, we'll go to the preview button. We'll try to see if we can have our character go up the hill. And our character runs right through the hill. Reason for that is uh, we need to put a rigid body on our character. So I'll click the preview button there. Okay, this is easy to do. And when I say on our character, I mean specifically on our player which is actually the capsule that our mesh is powering it to. So with that player selected, we're going to go to the right. We're going to look to where we see add component. We have this uh, RI, like if you don't see that, you can just search for RI and you can see the rigid body. So we'll left click. So now the character has a uh, rigid body on it. Okay, now the character has a rigid body. We'll go up to the preview of our character. Go up the hill. Character goes up the hill. It has issues. However, this is easy to deal with. The issue being it's not standing right. Uh, it's not rotated how we would like it to be. So we'll come out of the preview. We'll look to our rigid body over to the right. We'll look to where we see constraints as well as where we see... Uh, freeze rotation with this freeze rotation we're going to put a check mark next to the uh, x as well as the z so we're freezing the rotation for the x-axis as well as the z-axis as far as the rigid body is concerned okay with that done we'll go back up to the preview we'll go up the hill again and now you can see things are working like they should work as far as going up the hill. Yeah, my character can come around, move around fine on the ground. Uh, yeah, looks good. We'll go back up and come out of that preview. Okay, guys, that's it for the tutorial. Uh, I'm looking forward to making more uh, videos on making games in the future. For all the people that like the videos on this channel and we share them, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And if you are new to this channel and you like the videos on this channel, you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.